footwork with the camera this morning um, and we welcome Jill uh, is here singing with us so um, you don't have to listen to just our voices anymore Yay! Um, a few prayers for uh, a prayer concerns to be aware of so um, Kayla was supposed to be induced last week and it was postponed till this Tuesday um, so please keep Kayla and the entire family in your prayers, Tuesday the 15th, she'll be induced, um, and we pray for everything to go easily there. Uh, well, as easy as childbirth can. Um, uh, prayers of thanksgiving for Grace Ballesteros as she's recovering for, from back surgery and um, continued health and recovery. Um, my um, high school classmate, Mary Church, that has been on our, uh, that I told you about several weeks ago, um, died this week, unfortunately. Um, so please keep Mary's family, her daughter and her boyfriend, um, and all those that are missing her in, in your prayers as well. Uh, I think that's it for our prayers, prayer requests. Um, we, have, oh, we have a couple on coming in on the comments. So Thanksgiving for the vaccine, yay. Let's all pray that it works like it's supposed to. Um, and gets hand, passed out to those who need it most. Um, and um, Lori Prokes, is it Prokes? Um, asked for um, healing prayers for their family. Everyone, it seems like, is fighting COVID in her family. So prayers for that as well. Um, okay, let's take a moment and prepare ourselves for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Universe. 
Your prophets spoke of a day when the desert would blossom and waters would break forth in the wilderness. Bless us as we light the candles of this wreath. Strengthen our hearts as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. May he give water to all who thirst, for he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Isaiah, um, chapter 6, and it's sort of a mixed bag. Um, Chapter 61, sorry, I looked very quickly, Uh, and um, it it skips around just a little, Um, so if you want to turn to Isaiah 61, we'll start at um, verse 1, and then we'll skip partway through, I'll give you a moment to look for that. The first lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Word of God, word of life. Our next reading comes from 1 Thessalonians. Thessalonians is uh, one of Paul's letters in the New Testament, so it's partway through. There's two of them, so make sure you're on 1 Thessalonians. Um, We'll be in chapter 5, starting with verse 16. Second lesson comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Continue with our gospel acclamation.
to turn to uh, the first chapter of the Gospel according to John. So that's the fourth book of the New Testament, the fourth of the Gospels. We'll start with verse 6, and then we're going to jump around a little bit. But um, first chapter. Give you a moment. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of our Lord. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the light that you bring into our lives and the light you give us to share. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit among us now. Open our hearts and our minds. Bless the words of my mouth that your people may see and feel the light. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So we talked about John last week. I saw on one of the um, Facebook pages for ELCA clergy somebody asking some questions about preparing for this sermon and, and, and it was funny because they were like, why does John get two days in Advent? There's only four days in Advent. He gets half of Advent and he's John. I mean, we talked about him last week. He's kind of the weirdo. He's people, I mean, he has an important message, but how many times can you say he was baptizing and somebody more important is coming? And it's true. And it, <clears throat> I've kind of been um, trying to figure out what to do with that, what to do with John again. And I, this happens every year because we always have two, two weeks of John. Um, but it, it jumped out at me a little bit. Um, as I was reading, I, I was reminded um, of the four years ago when we were just starting the Gospel of Mark. And we had the Isaiah chapter that I read this morning. And I actually stood in the pulpit that Sunday. I remember it very well. And I read the, in the sermon, I read that um, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners. And he goes on and on about all these things that Isaiah is saying God sent him to do. And I stood in the pulpit and I challenged this congregation to, um, to make a decision to decide what our next, what our ministry was going to be. Either close our doors or take up this mantle that Isaiah threw at us. This uh, good news to the oppressed. The, see, I turned away from it and now I can't remember it. I gotta turn back. All of those, that list of, of wonderful things. Bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, etc., etc. I I said, it's time for us to to, to move forward or do something completely different. And so it was at that point that I challenged the congregation to move forward with creating um, the food pantry, which is still, it is now our main ministry. It's amazing. It continues to go. It continues to work hard. And, and we have um, people coming from all over the community to, to help at it, to help bind up the, the brokenhearted and bring good news to the oppressed and proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, all, all those who are um, 
are suffering because of whatever that and they can't afford or can't get food we're giving them that good news we're bringing that into their lives and we can i i should have checked with john we've been open for five years she jesse says this week so maybe it was five years ago that doesn't make sense with the gospel readings but that's all right we'll work with it maybe it was Isaiah comes up a lot. Anyway, I remember using this passage, and um, I, I should have checked with John, and, and uh, who kind of heads and knows the numbers of things, um, what our numbers are at, but they've been growing. I know they've been growing. I know we continue to do, uh, even in this pandemic, we continue to have volunteers come out. We continue to give food. Uh, we've had to change some of the ways that we do it, but that's the new norm, right? Um, things are changing. And so I, I remember that call that we each have to, to bring good news to the oppressed. That that's really the heart of Advent, is bringing good news, is giving hope to people. Um, not just hope because Christmas is coming and it's going to be happy and whatever, but, and not even just hope that Christ is coming again someday. He's promised that Christ will come back and make bring all things to him and, and gather us up and everything will be just as God wants. And, and that is another promise. That is another hope of Advent. But Advent is about giving hope, giving it now. And we hear um, the very beginning of John's gospel. Now, the John that we're talking about and the John who wrote the gospel are not the same John just to be clear. But the, the gospel writer, St. John, well, I guess they're both considered saints, but there's St. John and St. John the Baptist. It's confusing. Anyway, the gospel writer says about John the Baptist, he came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The light that comes into the world through Jesus. The light that comes into the world through the birth of that child in the lowly manger. The light that we celebrate throughout um, this season. In the church, we celebrate it as the candles um, fill up the wreath, as there's more and more light. And then outside the church, you see all the Christmas lights going up and, and um, all the decorations and the bright and happy and and that stays for a while and we celebrate that light it's a it's a season of light and it it's it's no coincidence that this season in the Christian church um, corresponds more or less with the Jewish practice of Hanukkah which is a festival of lights and um, the practice of Kwanzaa which is also about light um, in the dark of the winter, in the, in the deepest, darkest parts of our, of our lives, God brings light. And John, the baptizer, came to testify to that light. He came as a witness to tell people about the light of God in the world. Now, they tried to trick John the baptizer and tell him that, uh, and, and find out who he was and why he was doing the things he were. The Pharisees were constantly trying to trick people that said things that were different than what the Pharisees said. And John points out that he's just here pointing to the one who is the light. He says, I'm not the light. I came to testify to the light. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. John knew that Jesus was bringing more, that Jesus was the light that was coming into the world, not just a light bringer, but the actual light. And I would say to you, as we sit through and work through another Advent, an odd Advent, an Advent that is darker than we've come to know, an Advent where, yes, there's Christmas lights, but we have to stay away from people and we have to be careful where we go. People are doing less shopping because they don't want to be, a, we have to social distance. 
They're not necessarily doing less shopping, but they're not out in the light. They're not hearing the Christmas carols in the stores and seeing the decorations and, and interacting with people. Some might say that's a good thing because people get really nasty at this time of year sometimes too. But in this darkness, in this loneliness, we have the hope of light. We have John the baptizer saying, I have come as a witness to testify to the light. But we also are a people on the other side of the cross. We can't pretend that we don't know who Jesus is. We can't pretend that we don't know the story. Yes, there are some that have not heard the story and they don't know. But those of us that do know the story, we can't pretend it's not there. We can't pretend we don't know who and what the light is. And so we too are called, like John the baptizer, to be witnesses to testify to the light. Now, if you want to go out on the streets and stand up and, and wear camel skin and eat locusts and honey like John the weirdo, I mean baptizer does, did, you can do that and tell people about the kingdom. It's probably not going to get you very far. People will look at you. It happened to John too and think, well, that's strange. There are better ways to tell people about the kingdom. There's better ways to, to bring the light into their lives. You can tell them the story of Jesus coming into the world. You can tell them the promises of hope that God gives us through Jesus. Or you can actually be and bring the light because you have been made new by Jesus in your life. Because God has chosen you to know and be a witness, you can be the light in the world by bringing good news to the oppressed, binding up the brokenhearted, proclaiming liberty to the captives, release to the prisoners, comfort to all who mourn. Take up the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Don't shy away from this. You have hope that's been given to you so that you can share it. Think of those of you who have been to a candlelight service with us, or really anywhere, but a candlelight service for Christmas Eve. We're not going to be able to do it this year, but I want you to think about how this works. We light one candle, and from that candle, people light another candle and another and another, and the light spreads. But it doesn't go away. It, it's not just passed off. There's always more, and you can spread it to more people. That's that's the hope of Advent. Go out into the world. Take your light that God has given you and bring it to those who are in the darkest places. Tell them that they are loved, that they are important, that they are cared for, that there are those out there that want them to feel and, and be better. And give them the things you have the ability to give them, whether it's food or comfort or clothing or, or warmth or shelter or medicine or whatever, to take the light into the world. It might be as simple as when you go out into the stores, wear your mask. That's actually bringing light. Because it's thinking about the other. We are called to share that light, to be witnesses to the light of Christ in our lives. And God gives us what we need to do that. Through the hope of Advent, you share the light. Amen.
God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In Him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness, shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In Him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The land is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm looking for the coming of Christ. I want to be with Jesus. When we have run with patience the race, we shall know the joy of Jesus. In Him there is no darkness at all. The light and the day are both alike. The man is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. In case you're not following along on the comments it, online, um, Lenny just uh, shared that we share 300. Sh- I can talk. We serve um, 300 families a month on average at Share Food, Share Love Food Pantry. Remember when it was like 40? Wow. Um, so, yeah, the hope is spreading. Let us proclaim our faith with the whole church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For today's prayers of intercession, we will end each petition with, Hear us, O God, and invite you to respond with, Your mercy is great. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, You have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need, especially all we serve through Share Food, Share Love, Food Pantry, everyone on our congregation's prayer list, 
and those we name silently are out loud now. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved, imperfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share that peace, and however, whatever works, little Richard Nixon, jazz hands, uh, surfer boy, <laughs> it's a new one. This time we will move on to communion. I in, uh, invite you, uh, encourage you to gather your elements for communion, um, bread and wine of some sort. Uh, as I say the words of institution, lift them up in prayer, um, indicate them, lay hands on them, whatever works uh, for you, whatever is most meaningful. Um, after the words of institution, we will go on to the Lord's Prayer, uh, followed by um, uh, singing Heart of Worship, and then we will, um, then is the time to distribute communion. So, see, I didn't put my mask on. It's really good that I have this stuff memorized. Can you hear me through the mask? Okay. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come. deeper within, know the way things appear, you're looking into my heart, I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, all about you, Jesus, I'm sorry Lord for the thing I made it, but it's all about you. this time I invite you to share uh, the communion elements with yourself or those who are with you.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Amen. Receive the benediction. The creator of the stars bless you. Bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love. The unpredictable spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Um, just a quick reminder of who we are. <clears throat> we are a community of disciples embodying the unconditional love of Jesus with a firm commitment to the feeding of body and soul. <clears throat> um, oh, glasses, those are good. A couple announcements. Reminder, keep reading um, Voice of Faith. We are updating it weekly. Um, check the prayer list and, and let Jill know if there's people that need to be added or removed. Um, if you're interested in helping with any of the social media, web design, PowerPoint, that kind of stuff, um, let Michelle Liebrock know. Um, the poinsettias, uh, as you've heard, instead of many red little poinsettias, we're going to get four large white poinsettias. Um, are we out of time? No, today's the last day. Uh, yeah, today was the last day. To, can they still send it today? Okay, so if you uh, email Jill at the office today to let her know um, you want to be part of the raffle for, um, for the poinsettias, um, you can do that today. They're, um, it's $12, and uh, they will be um, delivered to you, and the raffle winners will be announced next week, I guess, is the plan. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Are we still doing the Zoom meeting? Okay. Um, we did not get any responses for the Zoom uh, meeting for December 18th, so that is uh, canceled. <laughs> it's a little weird to say. Um, couple announcements about upcoming worship. Next week is Advent 4. We'll do everything will be the same. Christmas Eve. Um, we will do a live service Christmas Eve, like Sunday morning. I don't know the time yet. We haven't decided that, unless you know the time. Probably five. That's what we usually do. Um, so five o'clock uh, live service on Facebook for Christmas Eve, and then it will be available if you're not a Christmas Eve goer and you want to watch it on Christmas Day, you can watch it on Christmas Day. Um, the services are usually very close to each other anyway. Um, and then uh, we will have a special, I'm taking the 27th, so two weeks, I'm taking that off. Um, but our synod, our, our, he's still a new bishop, most of you probably have barely heard his name, Bishop Curry, um, and the synod office have put together a, a service for the entire synod that will be on Facebook Live on the 27th. So um, just keep those things in mind. Okay, uh, go in peace, feed the hungry, prepare the way of the Lord. Let your rule and reign in our hearts again, increase in us we pray, unveil why we're made. Set our hearts ablaze with hope, with love, but in our very souls, Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church, we need your power in Release.
Thank you.